When we talk about the rotational inertia of an ice skater, what we can do is we could have a skater that's all spread out. And then later on, what they do is they bring their arms in tight. This skater has a large rotational inertia because there's a lot of mass away from the center where this skater is going to have a small rotational inertia because the mass is very close to the center. The angular speed is omega, how many radian per second they're spinning. And then this one is also has an angular speed of so many radian per second. The idea is just like with regular momentum, angular momentum is conserved. So angular momentum L before equals the angular momentum after. Well, remember that they, initially the skater had a large rotational inertia because it was so far away. So that gave them a small angular momentum. But when they brought their mass in towards the center, their rotational inertia got smaller. And since the rotational inertia times angular momentum needs to be the same, and the rotational inertia went down, the angular velocity goes up. So for a problem like this, what you need to do is just take the initial rotational inertia times the initial angular momentum, and that's going to equal the finals. And in this case, we're looking for the final angular velocity. So we would know the other three pieces, and then you can solve for that.